Exactly, and as long as you're able to position it well enough, it can absolutely sweep a game. We know Don Dozo, we've seen it pick up the titles before. It's very much capable to do the exact same as we are going to head in to our game one of round eight. We've got the lead. Eric is out with the Electabuzz as well as Rillaboom, so immediate fake out pressure, potential redirection as well, versus the Dragonite and the Volcarona. So Volcarona does not have Protect. It does have Citrus Berry, but it does have a lot of good utility moves in Struggle Bud, Will-O-Wisp, as well as Tailwind. Yeah, so I think the utility is the thing that makes this Volcarona the most important, and I think something that Eric is showcasing in this lead is that it's a little bit passive. This Rillaboom is going to set the terrain, but it's not going to really be pressuring too much damage into either the Volcarona or the Dragonite, mm -hmm. and so you can bring in this Incineroar, you get the Intimidate drop. This Dragonite is multi-scale, so this Intimidate drop is going to stick and matter. Yeah, exactly, as well as be broken with that Electro Web, actually bringing the speed down, as we did note, this Volcarona is not the usual Cobra Cloak support set. It actually has a Citrus Berry given the Don Doza does have that. Critical hit with a Heat Wave onto the Electabuzz. We just see a bit of a damage management from it. Kill inside. Just wanted to be able to lower the resource available to Eric and doing a really good job so far. Scale Shot hitting a fourth time, potentially going into a fifth time and already Incineroar is down to about half of its HP. Which is wild to think about because Incineroar is a pretty bulky Pokemon. Right. And so that's going to be really nice to have. You do see the Mirror Herb activating though, so this is potentially one of the ways that Incineroar can actually utilize this Mirror Herb. You are going to be able to get this speed boost, and so that <laughs> will help out Incineroar a That's little so cool. bit. Yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, to be fair, like, probably it depends on how fast the investment in the Incineroar is, really, right? Because it may even be to a point where if you've got bulky Volcarona, it might be able to outspeed at plus one, but we're going to have to find out. Most importantly, though, there's no immediate offensive pressure from Eric's side, so he's playing a very situational board state right now where he wants to be able to start whittling down Kylan's options but Kylan's just going for the raw damage he's just looking ahead of him and saying right as long as I chip Eric's Pokemon to a point where he no longer has the availability to switch I'm gonna be able to dominate in this scenario. Well, Electabuzz with this Electro Web is going to get some meaningful damage down onto the Dondozo, but you're also going to be able to look forward to dropping the speed of the Volcarona. The Covert Cloak was going to block that initial speed drop until we actually saw the Incineroar get rid of it thanks to the knockoff. I'm kind of wondering, though, where else is this damage going to come from? Because as you called out, these are some pretty passive Pokemon outside of the fact that you do have the utility from uh, the Electabuzz. Maybe if Thunderbolt's going to be nice, at least the Dondozo's half HP. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's pretty huge, right? Because at this point, you're forcing the Dondozo to not be able to take as much damage as it normally would be able to do so if it, of course, does have that Commander Tatsugiri uh, combination going for itself. And now, it's not only susceptible to speed drops, it's also susceptible to switch outs and with the Intimidate. We're just going to see the Electabuzz protect. And so the parting shot going into the Volcarona was kind of a greedy call. You're mm. saying, OK, Kylan, I don't think you're actually going to bring the Tatsugiri into that slot. Otherwise, the parting shot's going to miss. Yep. And if you do leave the Volcarona in, then I'm actually going to be able to get a meaningful special attack drop onto your Volcarona. Mm -hmm. And I get a chance to actually bring in one of my heavy hitters. It's going to be the Dragonite here for Eric, which is also going to be multi-scale. It's going to get broken, though, because of that wave crash. But you're still yep. sitting in front of a fire and a water type attacker as a Dragonite. Ooh, and we've got Tailwind now being set up from Kylan's side. So uh, this being the scenario where maybe Don Dozo just wants to try to be able to start picking up any sort of meaningful damage because it very much really needs to do so. It's quite literally a sitting... I'd say duck, but it's clearly not a duck. <laughs> um, it's a catfish. But uh, regardless, I, I think what Eric's trying to identify is getting those multi-hit efforts and damage to start whittling down Kylan's side of the field and potentially even catch a Dragonite switch in. But no switch ins. We just got redirection from Electabuzz. Electabuzz is going to help to at least be able to take away this wave crash. This Electabuzz is already going to be in a range mm. where you've got the wave crash, another attack is going to be able to get the KO, but it's really meaningful that the Electabuzz is around to actually have this follow me so that Dragonite isn't going to get burned. 
on Kylan's team, there is no intimidate. Oh. So you have to look at something like the Will-O-Wisp to be able to actually mitigate this Dragonite's damage. Yeah, I'm not sure if this may come into effect that initial crit because it was able to add a tiny bit more damage. If there's a five hit from this scale shot, Ah, actually, no, I take that back. Based off of the range, unless we get another critical hit, that might have put it in range, but no, no, not necessarily. But I think what Tyler was looking for there was hopefully picking up the Electabuzz with the Wave Crash, allowing the Wisp to go into the Dragonite and be able to neuter its damage output. But in this scenario, we see it's very board heavy from both of our trainers. Obviously, we don't have a reveal of Tyler's fourth slot just yet, but it may very well not even be Tatsugiri in this scenario. It could even be that another I think if it is going to be the Tatsugiri, though, Kylan has to play around the fact that the Stondozo is already going to be below half HP. If yep. you bring the Tatsugiri in, the Stondozo is going to be stuck on the field and only going to have so many turns to be able to actually get damage down. On the flip side of things, Eric is playing around the fact that you have softened up so many targets, you have to KO something, mm. and he's finally going to get rewarded with this Dragonite having a speed boost, gets a chance to go for the scale shot before both Corona or Dundozo get to move. Yeah, and I think this is sort of paying dividends to why you need to be able to position this Dragonite and not necessarily, let's say, bring a Rillaboom in, which sure, it would have been able to threaten the Dundozo, but the real issue was this Volcarona support as finally the Electabuzz does go down, but it does allow Eric a free switch in, and we know Cobra Cloak is um, knocked off right now. It may be susceptible to fake outs if we have the Incineral switch in right now, or even the Rillaboom, um, to be completely honest. But I think Eric's trying to bait out this Dragonite, and he very much has been able to do it. And of course, it did have its multi scale broken from the earlier Electro Web. Right, and because it's multi-scale as well, you can also fake out this Dragonite. So not only do you get the Intimidate drop here, but if you go for fake out and you also go for the scale shot, then this Dragonite is going to get KO'd. The big thing for Kylan's team is that you don't actually have the, uh, you actually have quite a few protects available. So Dondozo and Dragonite both have the opportunity to go for protect. So that is one way that you can potentially play around this okay. scale shot damage, protect something. Yeah, and I think that's sort of where Thailand's trying to rely a bit on. We still obviously know that uh, there's no bit, not been any terrestrialization. There's the option of going for the Fairy Terror in anticipation of any focus of the scale shots. But really, you need to be able to actually start sorting out and uh, getting rid of the third slot for Eric in order to avoid that synergistic switching of a Rillaboom, Incineroar, you got the Fake Out, you got the Intimidate, and thus being really pivotal to the game. This is one way that you can also get around that scale shot damage, though, and that is going to be with the Terra Fairy onto the Dragonite. But Eric also says, you know what? Maybe I get a chance to actually bait that out. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and protect my Dragonite. I'm not going to be able to fall to your scale shot. And the other thing about this protect is that you want to make sure that your Dragonite is actually going to be faster. There yeah. is still Tailwind available on Kylan's team, so you need to play around the fact that, yes, you have a couple of scale shot speed boosts, but this Dragonite on Kylan's side is probably still faster. And I do feel like the scale shot, though, could honestly pay dividends. Until now. <laughs> because of the fact that Tailwind's now expired, you could have been able to at least be a plus one of speed. And obviously, we've got the Dragonite over on Eric's side, not necessarily being able to directly threaten the Dragonite over on the other side of the field. So it's going to be a bit precarious for Eric to be able to navigate this a bit, even though Rillaboom's on the field. We know Terra's been burned from the Dondozer, and it may be susceptible to a Grassy Glide. I was going to say exactly exactly that this Dragonite now is going to take neutral damage mm -hmm. from these grass type attacks from Eric's Rillaboom. Mm -hmm. So when you take a look at maybe its HP range, could it double up actually knock it out? Uh, the only thing that's also going to impact this Dragonite is the fact that because it got rid of its flying typing, mm -hmm. it's actually on grassy terrain. It's going to exactly. be able to get the multi-scale back up. It's already regenerated. So Kylan says, you know what? I got what I wanted out mm -hmm. of this. I'm going to take my full HP Dragonite and I'm going to put it back in its Pokeball for later. Yeah, very well said. As we see the second Terra Fairy Dragonite emerging on the field now from Eric's side, wanting to be able to avoid any sort of awkward situations of scale shots. And Extreme Speed does go into the Archalodon now, does give it, uh, does not give it a boost, as of course it does not have the stamina ability. It did have sturdy, it has been broken. Critical hit as well to further add to the damage buildup. But Wave Crash now targeting a neutral Dragonite, nearly guaranteeing a two shot there. But of course, it's going to be the grass terrain recovery given the flying type is no longer in play. Yeah, it's kind of funny how that all works out.
show. We love yeah. that terrestrialization changes our type chart. For sure. Very awesome. <laughs> um, in this case, it does actually work out for Kylan a little bit better than it does Eric. Eric opting to double target into that Dragonite slot, seeing maybe there's going to be a free KO here, but in fact, there isn't. The Hitter Chalodon is one of the safest switches that Kylan could have made into that mm -hmm. position, able to tank the Wood Hammer as well as uh, the what, uh, whatever grass hip attack that was from the Rillaboom plus the Dragonite yep. perfectly. Now our, our Chalodon is in this position where it has his Power Herb, so this is why we don't actually see something like the Pelipper because it can go for Power Herb, uh, Electro Shot, yep. and still be able to get the special attack boost mm -hmm. and not have to worry about anything. Oh, but not just for this turn. We're going to see a safe protect here. Wants to be able to avoid any sort of high horsepower targeting into the slot. And better position itself, perhaps, against this Rillaboom. Maybe acknowledging it wants to try to at least get rid of the Dragonite with the Wave Crash. And like we mentioned, finally force Eric down to his final two slots. But now that our Chalodon is on the field, I am a bit worried for this... Um, I would even say Dragonite at this point, because now it's going to be susceptible to potentially a Flash Cannon KO. That is something that this or Chalodon is running. So because we don't actually, so because we have like the Power Herb and we don't have the Assault Fist, it's able to run something like Protect. Mm -hmm. And because it's not the stamina set and sturdy, you don't have Body Press. So you're afforded to be able to put something like Flash Cannon onto this or Chalodon, mm -hmm. which is going to be doing super effective damage to this Dragonite. You have to worry about that a little bit. But remember that this Dragonite still has these speed boosts. It's still going to be one of the fastest things on the field. It very much will be. But the question is, can this our Chalodon outspeed the Rillaboom. We're going to find out shortly. Scale shot hits one time. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite enough to be able to pick up the Archaladon. So the speed interactions between Rillaboom and Archaladon are going to be absolutely key. We know Power Herb sets sometimes do go ahead and actually run a lot of speed investment. But we're going to find out the big build up right now. What's going to go first? Is this Dragon going to be failed? Oh, Electro Shot does actually outspeed the Rilla. Electro Shot actually being able to allow itself up to special uh, attacked by plus one stage, of course, but now we're in a scenario where the Dragonite Terra Fairy over on Kylan's side will honestly be wanting to pick up the Rillaboom and maybe deal those multi-shot scales. This is a huge KO for Kylan to be able to grab. One of the biggest keys to success for Kylan was removing this Dragonite because this Dragonite has had three scale shot stacks at exactly. this point. So it is going to be super fast. Yes, the Dragonite for Eric does get knocked out, but Kylan is going to be so excited for that. I think the Archaladon is a worthy sacrifice to have to make, and you still have a full HP Dragonite on the field that is going to be able to keep that multi-scale. Problem is, there's still this Incineroar, but you still have two very powerful Pokemon here mm -hmm. for Kylan. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sort of a interesting scenario as well for the Rillaboom and Incineroar over on Eric's side because you could potentially pick up a KO if you maybe double target where possible, at least definitely on the Dom Dozo side. Multi-scale, you need a break, which may force Kylan to actually opt to go for the Protect right now, which could be read by Eric, and that's maybe a solo focus onto the Dozo if we're not expecting it to actually go on the defensive. Kylan is a pretty safe double protect here if he wants to. Yeah. You know that there's a possibility of fake out here from this Rillaboom, so you can just go protect onto the Dragonite as well as the Dondozo. And I think the... the it's nice because you are able to get that grassy terrain recovery. Mm -hmm. Maybe it actually puts Don Dozo into a range where it's not actually going to be picked up by something like a grassy glide. Yep. And then you have to play your odds of do you wood hammer? Can I knock you out before you do that? And all of the above. Yeah, and I think it's sort of a testament to understanding the board position as best as possible from Thailand's side of the field right now. Don Dozo can pick off this Incinero essentially, but and now that grass terrain is no longer on the field, I still feel like a wood hammer, respectfully, will be able to pick up the Don Dozo. It but should. Th it very much should. <laughs> but like the scale shot, though, has to move and pick up this Incineral first to be able to allow scenario where you can try to focus down on the Rillaboom. And it has been able to successfully hit. But unless it's a crit, it's probably not going to be able to pick up the KO unless it's a high roll. Oh, it has to be oh. a high roll. It's just barely not enough with five hits to actually knock out this Incineroar. Wow. So there is a possibility for this Incineroar and Rillaboom to actually get the double target into this Dragonite, but instead this Rillaboom goes for the gold, gets the knockout onto the Dondozo with the Woodhammer, mm -hmm. and that's without the grassy terrain there. Yeah, and I think it kind of doesn't need it right now, especially the Dragonite actually dropping that defense stage is quite crucial, but most crucially, the multi-scale has been broken, so that gave a bit of uh, cushion room for the 
Dragonite to be able to solo the Rillaboom as long as it connects with both of its scale shots, but that's no longer the case. It's got a two versus one scenario where we could easily see the Flare Blitz and Woodhammer being enough, surely because of that drop. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you were really hoping that you would have enough hits of scale shot to be yep. able to actually deal with that Rillaboom now the loaded dice is gone. Yep. And I think we have to call back to Eric being worthy or like kind of heads up play of actually sacrificing his own dragon. And he got so much accomplished with mm. it with earlier on in the game that it felt like, okay, maybe my Dragonite actually has overstayed its welcome. I've put Kylan into this position where you now have your own Dragonite on the field. My Incineroar survived. And at least you know you can get the extreme speed knockout here. So it really actually does come down to this Rillaboom. Has this Gale Shot defense drop actually done enough where this Rillaboom can actually knock it out? It's going to be the Grassy oh, wow. Glide. That's a big deal. That is a very big deal. And uh, obviously, Extreme Speed being opted in so you don't um, incur another defense drop from the Scale Shot. But in this scenario, unless we see multiple potential RNG rolls come into play from the Scale Shot, it should end up with the Rillaboom nabbing up this game one. Yeah, I mean, take a look at that. It's going to be two Scale Shots in, and it still looks like it's going to take about seven more to yeah. actually KO this Rillaboom, and so it's only three. Yeah, well, a load of dice, no more, as Eric is going to be able to clinch this one out. And in what fashion, too? I, I feel like there was a lot of momentum initially going for the Dondozo, but at some points towards the mid-game, it felt a bit too passive. Like, maybe if it was a set that had Yawn, there could have been, you know, some sort of Yawn Vortex play going on, but obviously it is that Prova Cloak, full offensive, paired up with the Tatsugiri. So I'm not 100% sold on the Dondozo being brought in game two, and that may be a point of adaptation from Kylan's side. I think what makes it tricky is that now we know sort of how much that Woodhammer is going to do with the Dondozo without the Tatsugiri. And then you have to kind of wonder, well, Eric was sort of playing around the fact that there could potentially be a Tatsugiri in yep. the back. Yep. And Kylan never really had that Dondozo healthy enough that even if that Tatsugiri comes in, you're able to actually get boosts from the commander ability that are going to be worthwhile to keep that Dondozo around longer. So it could have easily been a bit of a bait and switch scenario from Kylan to be able to force and condition Eric to play a certain way to be able to have a better in-depth analysis around how his future turns will play out. But I feel at some point Eric just kind of understood the jig was up. There's no Tatsugiri in the back and he understood which Pokemon and pieces he actually needed to be able to pick up or uh, pick up from Kylan's side to be able to break down that uh, Team 4 co uh, corp composition. I think something else that Eric did really well is that he actually positioned the Dragonite such that the scale shot defense drops didn't matter. Mm. Notice for a lot of the game, he had it in front of something like the Volcarona or he had it in front of the Archaladon. Yeah. In which case, Dragonite doesn't care. You're getting all of these impressive speed boosts for free right. without the downside of dropping your defenses, kind of like what we ended up seeing for Kylan's Dragonite mm -hmm. at the end of that first game. So what sort of adaptations would you like to see from Kylan's side? Because we did discuss maybe Dondozo might not be brought this game too. I think that if you're going to bring the Dondozo, it feels better to commit fully to the Dondozo Tatsugiri mm -hmm. as a pair rather than trying to fulfill this Dondozo's role as a solo Dondozo in a matchup where it doesn't actually work. The other thing I was going to suggest is go with the Annihilate. This is not a Pokemon that we got a chance to see in game number one, mm -hmm. but feels really good right now, doesn't it? Most definitely as it does have, of course, that plus one in its attack because of the Defiant, but we have the Mirror Herb proccing, and guess what? It's not going to be a plus one on Incineroar, it's going to be a plus two. So this is where I we were joking a little bit about the fact that Incineroar gets to use the Mirror Herb to actually get the speed boost, yep. but this is why Incineroar actually has the Mirror Herb. It makes you so much more confident to be able to bring in that Incineroar in front of one of these Defiant users like Annihilate or like King Gambit, yep. and you get a chance to take major use of the Defiant boost that you're giving over. Oh, 100%. And did you see that damage of the fake out into the Volcarona? Which wild. I'm pretty sure was very bulky. And now, with the combination of the scale shot, it, obviously there's a citrus berry, but it may well actually pick up the KO if it connects with all five. That's a really, really big deal. If Eric can come into this game, give over this Defiant boost, and still be able to get a knockout, this is going to be a key piece for Kylan completely removed. Yeah, but it's not enough, just barely surviving on a slither of health. But I think Eric respecting the Annihilate, not wanting to get those Rage Boost uh, accumulation hits onto it to make it an absolute terrifying monster. But we do have a scenario that 
the Annihilate is still up with the bulk up. It's got plus one in its attack and, uh, sorry, should I say plus two in its attack and plus one in its defense. So it really needs to potentially start picking up KOs. Incineral may be a bit susceptible and feel like it might have to tear her out of a drain punch. This is where having Dragonite with Haze becomes really impactful. You have these Pokemon that love to be able to get this set up, even though you're actually going to be taking away the boosts that you got from the Mirror Herb onto the Incineroar, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to actually remove the boosts that this Annihilate has. Yeah. Plus two attack, plus one defense. Yeah. But I love that Dragonite reads into the Protect just goes for the scale shot. That makes so much sense because you want to avoid any potential reads from Kylan's side with a Will-O-Wisp into that slot because we see how much work this Dragonite is putting in it doesn't necessarily have to sweep but it's quite nice to be able to just deal <laughs> yes, so much damage and out um, guarantee the speed tiering and the benchmarking over on Kylan's side so we do have our Chalodon now in the fray though and it does have sturdy still intact it does have that power herb and like we mentioned it looks like it's a bit speedy it could potentially outspeed this golden goat but it needs to respect the dragon it's not going to outspeed the dragon and that's kind of the biggest key is that you're taking a look at how Eric has positioned this game. You were very safe to go for the scale shot because you knew you were going to be faster than this You yeah. don't want to extreme speed because you don't want to be susceptible to flame body. But now you have the opportunity to go for haze. And where are the drops now? Drops are gone. Uh, I mean, there's no <laughs> the drops such Drops and the buffs are gone. Everything <laughs> is gone. <laughs> exactly. As Rage Fist did actually want to try to target down the Golden Ghost, start whittling it down, maybe even a double up at this point. But we're going to have to find out shortly after this animation. The important thing is we've got plus one in the special attack of the Archalodon. It's going to be a threat. It may even force Eric to respect it enough to go for yet another haze, but you're already losing a lot of immediate pressure, offensive pressure, to be able to start forcing it back onto Kylan. Yeah, so uh, maybe a little bit of an interesting board state is the fact that Dragonite also had to give up its own boosts mm -hmm. in order to actually get the Haze onto the Annihilate. But I think that matters the most. You're taking a look at this Annihilate, not taking any damage. If you're Kylan, you're really hoping that this Annihilate is going to take something. Yep. So this Rage Fist can actually do damage. Look Ooh. at that. Wow, that's respectable damage for non-boost, either on the Rage Fist or the uh, Defiant. But we've actually not been able to see the KO being picked up thanks to what seems to be a bit of a bulky golden go being able to survive the Dracon Media at plus one. But that's also where those Haze debuffs came in so clutch. Imagine if that Nihilate still had exactly. the Defiant boost, still had its bulk up. That golden go would be out of here. It would, and Ouch. a very crucial miss right there. We know this isn't stamina um, our Chalodon, so most likely actually would have been able to go down there and allow Dragonite to be put into that position where it's going to guarantee outspeed most of Kylan's Pokemon in the back. So very unfortunate from Eric, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's out of the game. No, he's still up a Pokemon count right now. He still has the opportunity to go for Terrestrialization, and he still has switches in the back. So if you want to bring in here in Center Oregon, you can. Yep. I don't necessarily advise it at this point because <laughs> you, you're not going to get the mirror boost, no. but... Yeah. yeah, but I think this is sort of the position at least that Thailand's wanting to bank a bit on, being able to have this Annihilate quite healthy and be able to dispatch and just essentially get as much boost as it can, whether through Rage Fist or even attack stages. But Rage Fist is now going to focus down on the Dragonite, finally breaking its multi-scale, hoping that a Dragon Meteor can connect and it does not connect, and that is so crucial. Oh, that is so critical. Any sort of damage onto the Dragonite would have been very meaningful here. This Archaladon was still at minus two special attack, so you're still not going to be able to get a one-hit knockout onto it, but who knows? Draco Meteor has a higher than normal crit chance. You might have been able to actually get through this Dragonite and... Eric finally gets a chance to finish the job that he would have loved to that last turn. To be completely fair, it does feel like there was a bit of a rebalance there of RNG, <laughs> the right? Scales the scales came scales, back to normal. I know, which we don't commonly see, actually. So, um, yeah, I think Eric being able to definitely come out the victor in that uh, altercation between the RNG roles, necessarily. But, yeah, we've got the speed boost on the Dragonite from Eric's side. He's got all fours of his Pokemon against the deficited Kylan with his remaining two.
Kylan just down to the Dragonite and the Annihilate, and this Annihilate is trying so hard to try to maintain any sort of Rage Fist stacks, mm -hmm. making sure you can actually get any meaningful damage. But the problem is, is that you still have to deal with this Golden Go. Now mm. it is going to be able to get an opportunity to just get some damage down in, I don't know, it's it's tough. It's a tough ask right now, I think, for Kylan to actually claw his way back into this game. Yeah, and I think Eric really has to respect the reverse sweep potential of the Annihilate. So uh, whether that being focusing down on it or trying to ignore it, he's been really doing a good job in handling the scenario. But obviously, now we've finally got a plus one Annihilate yet again for the second time in this game. But Terrestrialization is the option for the Dragonite. It's going for the Terra Fairy. It wants to be able to be immune to the scale shots. Yes, for sure. And it also has the opportunity to start to get its own boost. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to be able to take out this Dragonite. Mm -hmm. And because you know that Terrestrialization was already committed by Eric, yep. you know that this Dragonite on Eric's side can't actually go for the scale shot. It is going to be Eric's Dragonite that still was able to move first scale mm -hmm. shot connecting into the Protect. But this is where we actually see Kylan get a chance to do some damage. Yeah, I think Kylan really respecting the Golden Ghost slot there could have been a really good opportunity to focus down on that Dragonite and most likely pick up a KO because of its weakness, being able to break the multi-scale as well. But it does have a speed boost. Now, you're going to be put in a bit of a weird spot that you may potentially have to rely on a double protect if you want to be able to finally get rid of the Dragonite and thus be able to take advantage of the speed tiering changing and maybe starting to get those drain punches going to recover the HP back for the Annihilate. Yeah, it's just so tough. Like, yes, you can go for the drain punches. Uh, you might not get enough back. Mm -hmm. And I think, Kylan, at this point, too, you have to sort of play this coin flip of, I really want to be able to protect the Dragonite here. I need this double protect as well just uh -oh. to be able to get past the fake out. Uh, but. Yeah, unfortunately, not going to work. Not going to work. And is the scale shot going to connect in the Annihilate? It does. And that will seal up most likely this game, leaving the Dragonite over on Kylan's side on its very own. Eric being able to absolutely masterfully handle this board position to the point where Honestly, like, we, we saw the scenario of the Incineral having plus two in its attack and then actually opting to switch it out in order to take advantage of the board position. And we have the cancellation in. Eric Rios is going into day two undefeated. Wow, what an expert display by Eric. 